everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, we're gonna learn how to crochet these quick gift wrist warmers. These are such a fun and fast little project. You can wear these really inside or outside. Um, if you're chilly and you're indoors and you wanna read a book or have use of your hands, um, these are wonderful to have kind of hanging around the house. Also, if you're out and about and you need to use your phone and use the screen or push buttons or something like that, these are just really nice to have on hand. Now, I used some extra little yarn that I had for some of our other projects, and I was able to put a nice little stripe through there, and you can really get creative with these with the colors and the stripes. And this, in case you're not familiar with this series, this is part of the 12 weeks of gifting series on Fiberflux. We have a new pattern every week from now till the end of December. And this is this week's. We've done scarves, hats, cowls, all kinds of fun things. So I will put the directory link below. You can scroll through and look at all the projects we've done. And you can gift things as a set. You can whip up a few things. Um, I know as we get closer to the gifting season, um, you may need some ideas or some really quick little projects like these to whip up. So before we get started, be sure and use the hashtag FiberFluxCowl on social media. And also we have a Ravelry group and a Facebook group. So hop on over to those and join us if you haven't already. So let's get started. The finished mitts measure about seven inches tall and have a circumference of about nine and a half inches. I would call these a women's small to medium. Uh, you can make them larger and I'll give you some tips on how to do that and you can also make the thumb hole larger as well if you would like to do that. Now, also one thing I wanted to ask you before we get started, what do you call these? Do you call these fingerless gloves? Do you call them mitts? Do you call them wrist warmers? Do you call them wristlets? I'm super curious. I've seen so many names for these and I've actually in this video when I'm filming the video use all these names interchangeably. So let me know below, what do you call these? I know people call them all different things. I'd love to hear uh, what your thoughts are about that. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a ruler or tape measure is super helpful to get the length that you need if you need to measure as you go. We're gonna be using an eight millimeter L crochet hook and the yarn we'll be using is called Super Saver Chunky. Now, if you've been making some of these projects with us from the 12 weeks of gifting crochet along, you'll notice that we've been using the Red Heart Super Saver for all the projects. We've just switched up the colors a little bit. And we've been using the eight millimeter L crochet hook as well. So if you need to substitute yarn, just look for, on the back of your yarn label, look for the recommended hook size of the eight millimeter hook, the L hook, and a five bulky on the yarn weight scale, and you'll be just fine. The colors I'll be using today, and you will have leftovers, um, you could probably get more than one pair of the wristlets out of this uh, pattern and out of this yarn, or out of this yarn, not the pattern. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I'll be using gray heather, and I'll also be using dark orchid. So again, you'll have, you'll have some leftovers, and that's fine. Now, I just wanted to point out a little side note. If you're using the heathered colors, this is the gray heather, this is 168 yards, and this is a solid. The, the uh, dark orchid color is a solid. That's 173 yards. So the, the heathers are a little bit smaller on their skein. It's not gonna matter for this project because we aren't using the entire skein. Um, however, um, if you are you know concerned about that, just know that the heathers skein is a little bit smaller, okay? So let's get started. To begin, we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. So we're gonna start with the gray and work the gray for a couple rounds. And then I have just enough of this purple here to add that fun little stripe of color. So what we're gonna do is put a slip knot on our hook. So wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your crochet hook, bring up the loop and tighten. Next, we're gonna chain 18. So to make a chain, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the loop, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. The next thing we need to do is join to form a ring that will be the bottom of our tube, if you will, of our um, mitts. Okay, so we're going to go all the way down. And you wanna be careful not to twist. So what I do is I sort of run my thumb down the middle of the chain, and then without letting go, 
insert the hook into that chain farthest from the hook, wrap yarn around hook, bring the yarn through, bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. Okay, so we joined with a slip stitch to close the round. Now we're gonna be, begin working upward with our mitts and we're gonna work a, a two rounds of the gray, okay? So for round one, what we wanna do is chain two. One and two. And then in that first stitch, we're gonna work a half double crochet. So to make a half double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert it into that first stitch, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through all three loops on your hook. And that's the stitch that we will be using for the rest of our mitt, the half double crochet stitch. I also wanted to point out to hold this tail along the edge of your work here, and you can weave that in as you go along, and it'll just save you an extra step. So anything to make your life easier is always a good thing. So we're just gonna work half double crochets in every chain all the way around for round one. And I'm still holding that tail along the edges I work. So every so often I have to sort of pause and reline it up. Um, but you're taking care of two steps with one step. So I always love that whenever that's possible. Now for more dense fabrics, like all half double crochet stitches is a pretty solid looking fabric. For something that's really open or kind of lacy or meshy, you might want to weave that end in later, but for something that's uh, more solid looking like what we're doing, it's ideal to weave that in as you go along. It'll really conceal it. And you're using the same yarn, so color wise, it'll hide nicely too. Okay, so I'm just working my half double crochets all the way around. Now after a certain point, about halfway through, feel free to drop that tail. It's woven in sufficiently at this point. And we're just working our half double crochets all the way around. Okay, coming up to the end here. We just have a few more chains to work into. Okay, last chain of the round. So then what we wanna do is join to close the round with a slip stitch. So count two chains up. Remember that chain two we did at the beginning of the round? Count two chains up and we're gonna join with a slip stitch. So insert your hook, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And round one is complete. Now if you'd like, uh, let me grab my scissors. This tail that we wove in, you can go ahead and give this a little snip and then it's out of the way and you don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay, so for round two, what we're gonna do once again is chain two. And then instead of working into chains, we're gonna work into the stitches this time. We're gonna be doing the same half double crochet though. So wrap yarn around hook, insert it into that first stitch of the round and work your half double crochet. Work your half double crochet in the next stitch and every stitch all the way around, okay? I'm gonna continue with my half double crochets and when we rejoin, I'm gonna show you how to transition. We're gonna work this round two for a little bit, but we're gonna to transition to a little uh, stripe here. See how this one has that stripe? We're gonna do that next. Okay, so continue working your half double crochets all the way around and we'll rejoin in just a moment and move on to the next part. All right, just working that last half double crochet of the round. And then once again, we're gonna count two chains up and join with a slip stitch to close. So you're gonna be repeating round two for a while, but we're gonna switch colors. Uh, if you wanna add, so I have my other one here. Now, obviously I need to weave some ends, which we're gonna do at the end. But if you wanna add just this little splash of color, join me on this next part. If you wanna keep going with a solid color, just keep going. And I'm gonna tell you the, about the rounds and where to stop at this little thumb hole uh, in just a bit. But if you wanna change colors, hang out with me for just a minute. And what we're gonna do, now there's lots of ways to join yarn. It's totally up to you. I like to cut it, tie the new yarn on and move on. There are other kind of fancier ways to do it, but you know, feel free to do any way you like. Whenever you're doing a project, make it your own. That's the best way to do it. Okay, so what we want to do is fasten off, wrap the yarn around the hook, pull it through, and then we can just let that tail hang out. So this one's going to start looking like this one soon. <laughs> 
So where we left off that stitch, reinsert your hook back into that stitch, and then we're gonna grab our new color, which I'm choosing this purple. I love gray and purple together, but really choose anything. You, you can make yourself a holiday pair, all kinds of fun combinations, or the recipient's favorite color, ever you feel, or if you've made a scarf or a hat and you wanna match it up, that's also a fun way to do it. So we're just gonna bring these tails back down and get them out of the way. Reinsert your hook back into that stitch where we tied it on, bring up a loop, and we're gonna chain two. One, two. Then we're just gonna proceed uh, the way we've been with the previous round. So just repeat round two for this round as well. And that'll add just this really fun little pop of color at the wrist when you wear these. Now, if you wanna add more stripes, now I only did one little stripe, but if you wanna add more stripes to your mitts, you may do that. If this is a stash busting project for you, feel free to make as many stripes and colors as you like, okay? So we're just gonna do this purple all the way around and I'm gonna just take you through this part really quick because we're gonna rejoin the gray back on. And if you'd like to see that, um, stick with me for this round. So we're just gonna work our purple all the way around. You could also do, if you had some lighter purple, you could do sort of like a gradient. You can really do anything you like. All right, here's our last stitch of the round. And then once again, we're gonna count two chains up. One, two, and join to close with the slip stitch. Now you might need to, if it's snug, sometimes you gotta wiggle it in there. It's not always cooperative. And then what you can do is to rejoin the gray. You can stick with the purple for a little longer if you like, but I wanna rejoin my gray. We can just pull this tail right on out of the way, grab the next color, my next color is the gray again. I just wanted that pretty little splash of yarn in there. Reinsert it back into that area where you tied it off. Pull the new color through. Tie it right on. All right. Once again, reinsert the hook back in, bring up a loop. This will seem very familiar, chain two. And then you can just work your half double crochets all the way around, one in each stitch. Same thing we've been doing for the past few rounds. All right, so just go, go around with your half double crochets. So just keep working your half double crochets all the way around. And we'll finish this row, or round up together rather, because I wanna give you a little bit more information at the end of this round about how far to continue up past this purple and before you get to this thumb hole. Working that last half double crochet, and we're just gonna rejoin with a slip stitch. One, two chains up. And it's starting to look like our other mitt, very much so. So we have to do one, two, three, four more rounds, okay? So past this purple, you'll do a total of five. We've already done one, so do four more rounds of ro round two. So repeat round two four more times. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll rejoin and I'm gonna show you how to make this uh, thumb hole. It's super easy. Working the last half double crochet of the round and then we're gonna rejoin in that second chain up. Same thing we've been doing the whole time and now we are ready to move on to the thumb hole. We're joining with a slip stitch, same thing. So I just wanted to point out, we did round one and then we repeated round two for a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We did one round of round two, then we did a purple round of round two, then five more rounds of round two for a total of seven. The next thing we wanna do is work the thumb hole of our piece. Now. These are going to be, when you put them on, they can go in either hand. It's not like a specific thing where there's a design on top or something like that. But you could put the left one on the right one and the right one on the left one. So both of these will be crocheted the same way. I just wanted to point that out. So what we're going to do for the thumb hole round, well, the thumb hole round is actually completed in 
two rounds. We're gonna create the hole and then sort of fill it in. So chain two, one, two, work a half double crochet into that first stitch, work a half double crochet into the next stitch, and then what we're gonna do is create that thumb hole. So we're gonna chain three. One, two, three, and then we're gonna skip three stitches. So one, two, three, skip all those, and then we're gonna work a half double crochet into the stitch after that. So go ahead and do that, and you can see we have a thumb hole now. It looks kind of weird. We're gonna kind of fill it in on the next round. And then just work your half double crochets in each stitch all the way around. Now I wanted to also point out, whoops, if you slip your wrist warmer on or mitt, now actually this is a total off topic, but what do you call these? Do you call these mitts? Do you call them wrist warmers? Do you call them fingerless mittens, fingerless gloves? What do you call them? I've seen so many names for this type of accessory. I normally call them mitts, but sometimes I call them wrist warmers. So what do you call them? I'm really curious to hear. And is there a difference? Like, is there something that makes them called one thing and not the other? So super curious. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below about that. So anyway, uh, for your thumb hole, it, if you need it to be bigger, then you can chain more chains, but you just want to skip the same number. So I chained three and I skipped three chains. If you need it to be bigger, you can chain four, but you'll have to skip four chains or chain five and skip five chains. You just want that to uh, be the same number, okay? So we're coming up to the end of our round. We're going to work a slip stitch to close the round. Now I would recommend at this point to perhaps remove your hook and slip your mitt onto your hand and uh, just, well, we'll get all that yarn out of the way, but just make sure that thumb hole is gonna work out for you, okay? Make sure it fits, make sure it feels comfortable. You don't want it to squeeze, they will be uncomfortable to wear. And if you need to increase it, just uh, kind of go by those guidelines that I shared with you just a minute ago. So for the next round, what we're gonna do is chain two. Once again, work a half double crochet into the first stitch, work a half double crochet into the next stitch. And then what you're gonna do is in that chain three space, you're gonna work three half double crochets. So one, two, and three. And that will fill that in. And then what you wanna do is work a half double crochet in each remaining stitch in the round, okay? So just work your half double crochets all the way around. And I promised you these would be so super easy and they are as easy as it gets if you wanna make something like this. You can We're just working that last half double crochet of the round. Join with a slip stitch to close the round. And then let's grab our other mitt because what I wanna do is you can kind of straighten things out a little bit. Let's look at our other one. So we started from the bottom, worked our way up, created the thumb hole, filled in the thumb hole. Now we just need to repeat that. Remember that round two down there? We just need to repeat that two more times to finish our project. So chain two. And then work a half double crochet into the first stitch and in every stitch all the way around. And we're going to do this two more times, or two times total, this time and one more time. And then we will be ready to do our finish work already. This is a very quick little project to whip up. Now these are, um, I would call these an uh, adult women's small medium, small slash medium. Uh, if you want to make them bigger, just make your starting chain bigger. There's no special stitch count. You can really make these as wide as you like. Uh, these would also fit a teen and a big kid as well. If you want to make them smaller, just make your starting chain smaller and adjust the thumb hole uh, like I mentioned before. So we're just working all the way around here and we're back at the beginning already. 
I love these chunky yarn projects. They're so warm and cozy, but they also are quick, super duper quick. All right, I just joined with a slip stitch at the top. So we are in the home stretch. Let's work that last round together. Chain two. Then work your half double crochet in that very first stitch like we've been doing and in every stitch all the way around. I'm gonna go ahead and work this last round and we will rejoin in just a moment and we're gonna finish these beautiful mitts up. Working our last half double crochet, we're gonna slip stitch to join at the top of that chain and our mitt is complete. So as you can see, it's just really simple. It's just a really simple, pretty little gift that you can make. And what we're gonna do to finish is to cut the yarn. And let's go ahead and we're gonna straighten everything out. And we're gonna try these on. And they fit great. Now, what you can do too is, uh, like I said before, change your starting chain up a little bit if you need to do so. But we have a nice little set here and they look so cute. So let's weave the ends in and then we're gonna be all done. So what you wanna do is turn your mitt inside out. That's the easiest way to do it. And we're gonna thread our tapestry needle and you're just gonna go into these back loops because it's the inside part. You're gonna go in one direction. You're gonna come back in the other direction just to sort of lock that tail into place. And then I wanted to point out, when you go do this bottom part, if you did this little stripe like I did, for this part, when you do, for example, the purple tail, you'll want to stay in the purple area, okay? So thread that tapestry needle once again, and you're going to go into that purple area of your mitt. Okay, so go in one direction. I like to come back in the other direction. It sort of keeps everything staying put here, okay? And then you just wanna repeat these steps for this mitt and your other mitt as well. And now they're complete and they look so cute. These are just such fun little things to stitch up and they really fit a wide variety of sizes as well. They're wonderful to use up some scraps. I had just a few little scraps from the triangle shawl and the ear warmer and I was able to incorporate the last little bit in there and I can use this, this leftover yarn to even wrap around the package, give them a little hint at what's inside. One more thing before we go, be sure and use the hashtag FiberFlexCal to share your work on social media. That's such a fun place to see what everybody's doing and everyone has been picking such beautiful yarn and color combinations. So definitely share that. And also uh, join our groups if you haven't yet already. We have a Ravelry group and we have a Facebook group and those are wonderful places to share your work, ask questions, show off your yarn colors and things like that. So that is how you crochet the quick gift wrist warmers. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again.